Hey folks, it's Andrew Kilpatrick here, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about the K3020 Dual VCO. The Dual VCO is an all analog, digitally controlled VCO, which means all the switching functions, changing modes, and all the status displays and everything, and all the switches are done digitally, but all the signal path internally is completely analog. So you get the analog sound, but you get the convenience of digital control, a frequency display, and so on. And I'd like to show you a little bit about what makes the K3020 different than other oscillators and why you might want one in your system. So first of all, I'm going to turn up the frequency. We're currently using a sine wave on VCO2. It's a pretty good sine wave, pretty low distortion. As you can see, once uh, you let this frequency settle for a bit, the frequency display will show you the frequency in Hertz. It reads all the way up into the stratosphere. If the frequency is below about 30 Hertz, it's too slow to display it accurately um, because we want to update the display quite regularly, so it says LFO instead. So, in normal pitch mode, the VCO has a pitch range of just below the audio frequency range up to I think about 12 or 15 kilohertz. You could push it even higher if you have an external voltage going in in the CV in. Let me unplug that. Yeah, you can get it up to about 11 kilohertz by itself. Now, you can select different waveforms. So the settings are sine wave, which is right here, triangle wave, you can also have a sawtooth wave. So if we, if we turn this over here, we have a pulse width modulator. Uh, this is a single PWM, and you can see I'm varying the duty cycle. And you can cut it off in either direction if you want. We have a dual PWM with two pulse width modulators that are mixed together to create some really neat, narrow, multi-pulse waveforms. And then we also have a triple PWM, which makes really complex waves. So, this is the blend output that we're listening to right now. There's no other things connected to the module. On one end of this blend control, we get the sine triangle or ramp wave, sawtooth wave, whatever you prefer. And on the other end of the control, we get the pulse waves. So you can actually mix between them. And not only can you mix between them with the, the control on the front panel, you can also mix between, the, between them with a voltage. So if I take a voltage out of this side of the K3020, the two sides are identical, by the way other than the stuff that's in the middle, and I'll explain that in a minute. But let's say we take an output from this output here. We've got a, a sine wave. If I put this in to the blend in control, and I turn it up, and put this halfway, now we're using another signal to fade between the wave, whatever's selected on the wave switch, and the pulse whatever selected on the pulse switch. You can also get the dedicated pulse output of its, uh, out of its own jack. And uh, there's another interesting feature which I'll get into right now, which is that VCO1, you can use it like a modulation section and feed it into VCO2 through the controls in the center section. So what you can do is you can say, okay, well, I've got this going at a slow sine wave type thing. I want to put the, modulate the pitch with that. So if I turn that up, now we're doing a pitch modulation effect. If I have, if I'm listening to a pulse waveform like this, and I say, oh, I want to do a PWM. Now I turn that up, and now that's mixing this signal and controlling the pulse width on the other side, on VCO2. I can do them at the same time, and I can also mix the blend 
So I was using the cable before, but I actually don't need the cable. I can just use the blend mod control here. And there's some other interesting things you can do with this too. If you put this in pitch mode, so that it makes higher frequencies. You can get crazy FM sounds. It sounds really good if you use two sine waves. So the PLL control will cause VCO2 to tune to VCO1 within a very small range. So VCO1 is phase lock locking VCO2 using a very small capture range. And you can do this interesting things like picking off harmonics. You can also sync oscillator 2 from oscillator 1. This does sort of a hard sync effect. We can also get access to the wave mix out. So this is the blend, the, the wave mix just before the blend control on both modules come out in a single output. So you can get them both at the same time if you want. You can also use the XOR output. This is a digital multiplication of the two channels. Okay, so now I have a triangle wave mixed with a pulse wave. So, one, e one natural thing to do would be to do a bit of PWM using the built-in PWM mixing circuit. But we might want to do something else too. Let's say we'll take uh, the blend out from this module and we'll use this to do, let's say, the blend control. So now we're fading back and forth between the pulse wave and the uh, triangle wave. We can also do some other interesting things. So let's say we're going to turn that back up so we can hear it some more. Okay, there's our blend modulation. Let's, let's turn it down so it's not so high pitched. Now we still have this PWM going on, but let's say we want to do something weird with this other oscillator. So we have, let's say we have this LFO signal still. We're going to put this into the FM input. so it doesn't do that much. Or actually we could even stick it into the CV input. If we want it to sound crazy. But let's just do the FM signal. We can turn down the FM input like this. But now, check this out. Because I have the blend output and I can mix between the, this is the sine wave, this is the triangle wave, and then here's the sawtooth or ramp wave, if I put it on the sine wave, slow this down, so now I'm get, getting this kind of siren effect. If I turn this over to the pulse wave, now we 
we're getting this kind of stuttering effect up and down because I have on the multi pulse mode. If I just do it on the single pulse mode, I'm going to get this toggling in pitch. Now, if I change the offset, we're adjusting the duty cycle. But if I blend between the sine wave and the pulse wave, I'm going to get a partial sine wave, and then I'm going to get a partial square wave. It's going to cause the sine wave to jump up and down. And if I put on the multi-pulse mode, we can get some pretty complex modulation shapes. using the gate output from the pattern generator to affect the blend mixture so that when the gate is on the blend is giving us a brighter sound because it's using some of the square wave or pulse wave as well.